welcome all welcome to this video in this video we discuss powder diffraction patterns of simple cubic body centered cubic and face centered cubic crystals in the previous class we learned about the technique of powder diffraction one of the xrd technique to identify the crystal structure and we have seen that the best part of powder diffraction technique is that it give, it is it is the fingerprint of the compound or it is so characteristic of the compound that we can identify the lattice very easily but the difficult part is that it is very skillful to analyze the powder diffraction pattern obtained it is the crux of the technique that is how we analyze the powder diffraction pattern that is what we discuss today we consider the three different types of cubic lattices and we see how the powder diffraction pattern differs how we do the analysis of powder diffraction pattern that means how we relate each reflections each uh, lines to each plane which line correspond to which plane that is the analysis how we do it let's consider bragg's equation n lambda equal 2d hkl sin theta hkl where hkl is the miller indices of various planes but we know that for cubic crystal dhkl is equal to what a by root of h square plus k square plus l square substituting this d here you get l lambda equal 2 a sin theta hkl divided by root of h square plus k square plus l square we are deriving a relation for this analysis squaring both sides you get n square lambda square equal 4 a square sin square theta hkl divided by h square plus k square plus l square now generally we take n equal 1 that is first order diffraction so that goes from this i can take what is sin square theta sin square theta hkl is equal to cross multiplying what do you get sin square theta is equal to this comes up this comes down you get and n is 1 so you get it as lambda square divided by 4a square into h square plus k square plus l square and this is a constant for a given x ray and for a given crystal these are constants let me write it as k into h square plus k square plus l square so we have this equation sin square theta hkl is equal to k a constant into h square plus k square plus l square so keep this equation in mind using this equation we can do analysis of powder diffraction patterns of various crystals right what we do we put all possible values for hkl that's a miller indices starting from 1 like 100 0, 0, you have various planes in crystals 100 0, 0, 1 1 0 1 1 1 2 0 like that so putting all values of hkl you get various values for theta various angles for various planes at which you get reflections now let us compare these uh, diffraction patterns 
starting with simple cubic or primitive cubic. It is that for primitive cubic you get reflections or the lines for all the possible values of k. That means, see, when you put various values for hkl, it will be like this. If it is 1, 0, 0, that is the, the first plane which we come across. Substitute the values here, 1, 0, 0, what do you get? 1k, that is 1k. The next one, 1, 1, 0, putting it here, you get 2k. 1, 1, 1, 3k. 2, 0, 0, 4k, right? You understand? That is 2 square, 4k. 2, 1, 0, 5k. 2, 1, 1, 6k. Interestingly, there is no plane corresponding to 7k. That means, putting values for a scale, you won't get any 7k, isn't it? This is called omissions. You have no such value and you have no such plane and therefore you have no reflection lines in the powder pattern. And it goes like that. Interestingly, again, to get 9k, there are two planes possible, 3, 0, 0, as well as 2, 2, 1. If you put it here, you get this. So for simple cubic, it is that reflections are obtained. Reflection means due to constructive interference, you get an intensity maxima that gives the line. So reflections are possible for all values of hkl or for all planes, you get the lines. When it comes to BCC, body centered cubic, you can see difference. That is the point, very important point to discuss. The point is that there is no line for 100. Zero, zero. There is no line for 111. One, one. And like that, there are some missing lines. Here we learn a term in connection with this that is called systematic absence or extinction. You may note that what is called systematic absence systematic absence or also called extinction what is this certain lines are missing in the powder pattern of certain lattices for example in BCC no line corresponding to 100 zero, zero. Why this happened? For to understand this, we have to go back to the uh, crystal planes which we learned in another class. If you take for example BCC, right? In BCC, if you show the particles, you know there are particles at the eight corners as well as one at the body center. And when you show the planes, see, this is the 100 zero zero planes, right? We have already learned about this. This is the 100 zero zero plane. 100 zero zero plane, this is 100 zero zero plane. And it goes into other unit cells. But we have seen that in BCC, in between 100 zero zero plane, you can see a particle, not only in this unit cell, it will come in all other unit cells. So you get a similar plane. Between 2, 1, 0, 0, there is a plane to be shown which comes halfway, midway between 1, 0, 0, right? I am drawing a new plane which contains this particle. Of course, it will extend to other unit cells. The point is, this is a new plane in BCC and that is denoted as 200. You remember that. It is called 200 because this intercept is A by 2. This is A, this is A by 2. So when you take the, we see in this it is half infinity infinity. Taking the reciprocal it becomes 200. So 200 plane is there. So when X-ray comes, what happens you know? When X-ray comes from this plane as well as this plane, they undergo constructive interference. But when uh, that that is the case of primitive cubic but in BCC an X-ray comes from this one also so these two because you know this is lambda of course this will this will be in phase reflection from 100 zero zero will be in plane in in phase but when 200 zero zero comes
comes, what happens? The diffracted X-ray coming from 200 will destructively interfere with that from 100 because they will be out of phase. If this is corresponding to lambda, then this will be lambda by 2, not integral multiple of lambda. The point is reflection from 200 and 100 will be out of phase, so interfere destructively big, so that reflection corresponding to 100 will be missing. That is what is called systematic absence. I repeat, reflection from 200 and 100, the diffracted X-ray from 200 and 100 will interfere destructively such that Reflection corresponding to 100 is missing, but the reflection for 200 will be present. You can see that here. 200 line is there. 100 line is missing. This happens not only in the case of 200. In BCC, you know, there is also mid planes corresponding to 111, right? Between 111, if you draw 111 plane, you can see that there is 2, 2, 2 plane in BCC. So, likewise, in the case of reflection from 2, 2, 2 will be out of phase with 1, 1, 1. So that reflection corresponding to 1, 1, 1 also will be missing. You can see it's missing. But 2, 2, 2 will be there. That comes out of this. Of course, this will continue. So, this is what is called systematic absence. This happens not only in BCC, it happens in FCC also. So, the point in the case of this is that first line obtained is at 110. This very point will help you to distinguish simple cubic and BCC. Because in simple cubic, the first line appear at which one? 1k. For BCC, first line appear at 2k. And again, in primitive cubic, the separation between line is what? It is k. You have all the lines. In BCC, separation between two lines is 2k. You can see it's 2k here. Here it's 2k. It goes like that. Then, you, uh, uh, naturally comes a question, I mean, uh, that is, uh, how you identify all these lines? Which lines are possible? Which undergo systematic absence? taking all the planes into consideration. Here there is a generalization that is to be noted. For BCC, lines are obtained for planes for which H plus K plus L is even. That is a generalization. For BCC, lines are obtained when H plus K plus L is even number. That means when it is odd, there will be systematic absence. Let us check. See, in the case of 100, zero, zero, you can see 0 is considered to be even, right? So this is 1 is odd and this is even. And so it's not that. You just add them, right? Add them. What do you get? 1. It's odd, so absent. Then 1, 1, 0. Add them. 1 plus 1, 2. It's even number, you get line. 1, 1, 1. It is 3. If you add them, it is an odd number, systematic absent. 2, 0, 0, you get 2, line is there. 2, 1, 0, it is 3, missing. 2, 1, 1, it is again even, you have line. Okay, and this is not, remember this is not systematic absent, this is an omission. There is no line possible in any crystals, any lattices for 7K. And it goes like that. Very interesting. Finally, Let's go to FCC. What about FCC? In FCC, you have two lines missing, two systematic absences at the beginning. Why? In FCC, we have learned that the planes which you notice are 200 zero, zero is the 220 two, uh, two, two, plane and it is 111 one, one planes. Like that, that means if you consider 100, 110 and 111, these are the basic uh, Miller indices, we see that there is new plane in the middle, right? There is 200 for FCC. If you look at the diagram, you can see that in FCC, between two 100 plane, there is a 200 plane. A new plane appears. Also, between 
every 110 plane also you can see mid plane that is called 200 but 111 plane you can see that there is no new plane coming in, in between so what happens in this case there will be destructive interference so this will not be seen in this case also reflection from 220 will can destructively interfere with 110 so that 110 will be also absent systematic absence and for 111 there is no mid planes so there's no destructive interference so you will be getting the line for 111 so what happened the first line appear in fcc is what for 111 plane right and for 200 it is the for 210 no line for 211 no line then comes 220 how you identify here also there is a generalization very interesting in the case of FCC the generalization is that reflections are obtained when H comma H comma K comma L that means the individual Miller indices are all odd or all even H K L integers should be all odd or all even if it come mixed there will be systematic absence that is a generalization FCC that is let us check this check the first one one zero 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 is considered to be even I told you one is odd and this is even so mixing no line one one zero again mixing no line 111 all odd there is line 200 all even right 2 is even and 0 is also considered to be even so there is line 210 odd even mixing 211 mixing no lines no lines here of course and 220 again all even here this one 300 221 mixing no line so you can easily identify the lines using this generalization so to distinguish simple cubic body centered and face centered what could be the best way or the best point of distinction in simple cubic the first line at 11100 in bcc first line at 2k or for the plane 110 for fcc the first line obtained for 111 plane right so that is how we are analyzing the diffraction pattern and identifying the lattice type, uh, noting the reflection lines. So, in the study, we do this index, this is called indexing of reflections. Indexing of reflection means uh, relating various reflections to various planes, right? So, when you do, when, once you do that, you can go for calculations using the Bragg's equation. You can calculate A value, value of A, that is a unit cell edge. Substituting the angles and HKL values, you will be getting a constant A from the equation. And you can uh, go for various uh, measurements of the unit cell dimensions using XRD studies. Right? So that's about powder diffraction patterns of the three cubic lattices. In the next class, we will go to specific examples of three crystals that is cesium chloride, sodium chloride and potassium chloride, their powder diffraction pattern. So we will analyze them in the next class. Thank you.